Okay, so we're in Dav Zayin Amid Aleph, and we're discussing that third wall of the sukkah. We saw two opinions yesterday as, as far as what that third wall of the sukkah is supposed to look like. Everyone agrees that it could be one tefach, like the Mishnah had said, but one opinion was is that you put it flush up against one of the sides of the L-shaped sukkah walls, and, uh, and the other opinion is that you have to distance it a little bit less than three amas, and you need a tefach socheik, which is a tefach slightly wider than a standard tefach, so that it dips into the three tefachim of lavud airspace, so that you have the majority of a seven tefach wall, a four tefach wide wall, using the principle of lavud. I hope that's clear to everyone. And does, does anyone need further clarification? How much do you need to get for Lovet? Lovet is less, less within three tefachim of air space. Then it's considered Lovet. Is Lovet. Okay. Right. So therefore, by adding that one tefach at, a, at a distance of just less than three tefachim, you have a four tefach wall. Okay. That was the opinion of Rabbi Simon. So now we're up to Amar Rav Yehuda. Sukkah ha'asuya kemavoi kishera. If you have a sukkah... Uh, that's made like a mavoy mefulash, a mavoy that's open on both sides, which basically means you have two parallel walls, like in diagram gimel on the margin of your page. Mm-hmm. So that is a kosher a sukkah, but where's the third wall? Mm-hmm. So the answer is, in other words, you, the, the chiddush of this statement is you don't need a, an L. You can have two parallel lines, two parallel walls. The oso tefach ma'amido l'chol ruach shiyirze. And that tefach, you set it up, um, either right next to the left wall or either right next to the right wall at a right angle, and that's fine. Um, so, Rabbi Simon, Vitema Rabbi Shua ben Levi, Omar, now the same Rabbi Simon who said yesterday that you need to distance that tefach slat a little bit, he goes even further when you have two parallel walls, and he says, O salau pas arba'a umashu, umaamido bepachos mishlosha samach ledofen, v'chol pachos mishlosha samach ledofen, kalavadami. He says, no, a one tefach slat in this scenario where you have two parallel walls and not an L, that's not sufficient. You need a full-fledged wall of seven tefachim minimum, which is the minimum measurement of a wall. And the, the way that you can get away with it with the least amount of material is to take a four tefach wide slat, just a little bit slightly larger than four tefachim, and then put it within three tefachim of one of the two parallel walls at a right angle, and then you'll lose, you'll apply the principle of love. But in that situation, in that way, you'll have a seven tefach wall. So the Gemara's question is patently obvious. Why are you making this? Why is there a difference halachically? Before, when the two walls were in the shape of an L, you, Rebbe Simon, had said that all you need is to one tefach slat that's at a distance of three less than three tefachim. Here, you're requiring a four tefach slat. What's the difference? So the Gemara says, Hasam di'ikoshtei tefanos ki hilchasan sagilei betefach sochek. Hacha deleka shtei tefanos ki hilchasan i'ika pas arboa in ilolo. And, and he basically says it's really a conceptual difference um, based on a person's perception of a structure. When you have an L-shaped structure, you've already got the beginning of an enclosure that you can actually discern. By just adding one tefach on one of the sides, you know, to add the beginning of a third wall, then you have the perception of being within an enclosure. But when you have two parallel walls that are open on both sides, you don't have that same perception, and therefore you need to do more in order to create a real wall not just the majority of a wall. That's the reason. It's, it's basically, it's a subjective, uh, perceptual issue, but, uh, but, that's, but that's what he argues. Amar Rava, ve'ena niteres ele bitsuras ha-pesach. Now, Rava comes along with a new statement, and he's now addressing what is needed for the third wall. What he says is needed for the third wall is that you are permitted to dispense completely with the tefach, and the way, when the Mishnah says you need a tefach, really it's not a tefach. All it's saying is that you need a tzuras ha-pesach. Now what is a tzuras ha-pesach? We learned before that for the laws of Shabbos, you don't need an actual wall. You can get away with a doorway, like for, for the purposes of constructing an enclosed city for an Eruv. You don't need an actual wall for an Eruv you know, around the city. You just need doorways. It's what's called a tzuras ha-pesach. So you need two lechis, which are two vertical sticks going up, and a korah, which is a lintel across the top. 
So those two studs that go up do not have to have any minimal measurement. So when the Mishnah says you need to have an extra tefach, it's basically saying you can have a half a tefach uh, lechi here, half a tefach lechi here. As long as it's the measurement of an actual wall, a uh, seven tefach distance, just put a kora over, over on the top. And that's all you need. It's that's diagram hay. That's really all you need in order to have your third wall. You don't need an actual slat of a full width of a tefach. So, Ika da Amri, there are others who learn that Amar Rava Viniteris Nami Bitsuras Abesach. That Rava was not saying that this is the only thing that will work, but he was saying it's either or. That you can either use the Tefach Sochek, like Rabbi Simon had advocated, to have the majority of a wall, or you could have a full wall using a Tsuras Abesach using a doorway instead of an actual, instead of actual uh, hard material. And Ika da Amri, and a third opinion of what Rava said was, Amar Rava utzricha nami tzorah that Rava says you need both. In other words, in order for that third wall to work, use Rebbe Simmons' solution of placing a tefach socheik at a distance of less than three tefachim, and that's the majority of your, of your wall. But for the remainder of the wall, you need to set up a Tzuras HaPesach for that remainder of the distance that brings will bring you out to the other side, in other words, to be parallel to the other side of the L. That's what Rav is saying. So in, according to this third opinion, he's actually being machmir. That Rabbi Simon's halacha of having just a one tefah slat is not sufficient. You need to add on to that with a Tzuras HaPesach in order to go the full distance of the wall. Ravashi Ashkachel la Rav Kahana to Ka'avitefach Sochek, the Ka'avitsuras Apesa. So the Gemara explains that uh, once there was a Misa, that Ravashi discovered that Rav Kahana was building his sukkah and he was putting up the Tefach Sochek, like Rabbi Simon had said, and adding on to that, he put up a Tsuras Apesa. So Amar Lelo Savar Mar Laha de Rava, Domar Rava Viniteris Nami Bitsuras Apesa. Don't you hold of Rava's statement that either or? You don't need both, you could use either. So Amar Lei, Anaki Idach Lishna de Rava Svirli, Domar Rava Svicha Nami Tsuras Apesa. He said, I hold like the other version of what Rava had taught, which is that you need both, not either or. Let's go on. Shtein ki hilchasim chulei, the Mishnah had said you need two halachic walls that are solid, full walls, and the third one could be just a tefach. Amar Rabba v'chein l'shabbos, migu da hav yendofen l'inyan sukkah, hav yendofen l'inyan shabbos. So here's an amazing concept. But by the way, we're running through this. There's a lot of depth here, but we just realize that. We're running through this. The Gemara now says like this, the laws of Shabbos and the laws of Sukkah are approximately the same, but there are some substantive differences as far as defining what a wall is for the purposes of establishing, let's say, a Rishos Sayachid. You remember the laws of Shabbos, remember the laws of Erevin? In order to have a, a Rishos Sayachid, you need to have a full enclosure of an area. If you have more open space than closed space, that's not an enclosure. But that's not true for sukkah. So you see, like for sukkah, all you need is like two walls and a little bit extra. That would never fly for the laws of Shabbos to call that a Rishus HaYachid. However, says Rabbah, that on Shabbos of Sukkot, because we use a placement called Amigu, which is that the fact that it works halachically to call this a sukkah based on our halacha l'moshe misinai, it also works to call it a rishus hayachid such that if my sukkah is flush against my house and there's a little window between my house and my sukkah and I want to pass the food out and this sukkah is now in a rishus harabim, I'm not doing anything wrong. It's called a rishus hayachid vis-a-vis Shabbos as much as it's called an enclosed area vis-a-vis sukkahs. Okay, that would normally not fly on any other Shabbos except for sukkahs. Okay. Even though Shabbos is tadir? Even though Shabbos is tadir, even though Shabbos is more chamor. Right. Even though Shabbos is an iser, 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 iser kares, right? right? Is an iser misa, right? Okay. So Eisve Abaya. So Abaya challenges this, and he says, "Umi amrin and migu." Since when do we say such a migu that you can apply the laws of Sukkot to the laws of Shabbos? The Hatanya. Look at the following brisa. Dofen Sukkah kedofen Shabbos. The laws of the wall of a sukkah are like the same as the laws of Shabbos. Provided that, and really what the uh, Bryce is talking about over here is if you want to construct a wall that is not solid. Now, normally, 
um, when you want to construct a wall, you make like a chain link fence, fence or lattice work to make sure that you're both you're going zigzagging so that you have more, more coverage of solid space. What if, however, you only want to go in one direction? What if you only want to create vertical sticks or you want to create horizontal wire that's running across like a corral, right? So that's also okay, provided that you fulfill the, the law of lovehood, which means that you keep the sticks within three tvachim of each other, or you keep the wire within three tvachim of each other. Then that's a halachic wall, both for the purposes of the laws of Shabbos and for the purposes of the laws of Sukkah. And then it says, V'yaseira Shabbos al Sukkah, Sheha Shabbos enen iteres ela ba'omid meruba al haparutz, ma she'inkein v'sukkah. However, there is one stringency that exists in the laws of Shabbos that does not exist in the laws of Sukkah. By the laws of Shabbos, if you have more breached area than you have closed off area, you cannot judge that enclosure as a Rishus HaYachid. Whereas by Sukkot, you just need two walls and a little extra, and there could be doorways in those two walls, there could be windows in those two walls, and you could end up with a perfectly kosher Sukkah where there's more air space than there is enclosure and it's still going to be called a kosher a sukkah. But that's not true by the laws of Shabbos. So the Gemara says, you see very clearly, that there are differences in halacha between the laws of Shabbos and the laws of sukkah. So the Gemara says, my love, you say Shabbos to sukkah, a sukkah below rinan migu. So doesn't that imply that even on the Shabbos that coincides with sukkahs, we would say that halacha, that the sukkah is not going to be kosher on that Shabbos to be counted as a rishos hayachid. <clears throat> it may be a kosher a sukkah, but you can't transfer food from your house to that sukkah. That's what it seems to imply, that b'risa. So the Gemara says, lo. Yisei rosh Shabbos da'alma al Shabbos to sukkah. So really what the Gemara is answering is that no. On Shabbos of sukkahs, that is called a Rosh Hashayach. And all the Bryce is pointing out is that on every other Shabbos of the year, all, all the other 51 Shabbatot of the year, that will not count as a Rosh Hashayach because you have more open space than you have solid wall. But on the Shabbos of Sukkot, that Bryce will agree that that is called a Rosh Hashayach because of the application of the Migu. So now the Gemara says, Ihachi lisni nami yesera sukkah da'alma a sukkah de Shabbos. The ilu sukkah de alma baya tefach socheik, the ilu sukkah de Shabbos, lo baya tefach socheik, the sogi belechi. So the Gemara's question is now wait a minute. If you're telling me that you can apply a migu from the laws of sukkah to the laws of Shabbos, then it should be reciprocal as well. You should be allowed to apply the laws of Shabbos to the laws of sukkah. Now here's a leniency by the laws of Shabbos that we don't find that exists by the laws of sukkah. On Shabbos, because he says, you were the one who said that if a person puts schach on top of a mavoy mefulash, as long as one of the entry, as uh, you know, a um, a, um, a sukkah that is uh, a mavoy rather that goes all the way through is open on both sides, like the diagram number gimel. If you put schach over that and you just put a lechi on one of the entryways. You, Rabbah, said that that's a kosher a sukkah on sukkahs. So based on that, why didn't the Brisa also say that just like we can apply the leniencies of sukkahs to the laws of Shabbos when Shabbos and sukkahs coincide, we can also apply the leniencies of Shabbos to the laws of sukkah. You see, normally we had said that when you have two parallel walls and it's open on both sides, you need a tefach. You need that slat, that's one tefach. And yet you yourself, Rabbi, said that when it's Shabbos and Sukkot coinciding, all you need is a lechi, just a little stick that's less than a tefach, because that's all that's needed in order to enable you to carry in that mavoi. So if that's the case, why didn't the Bryce say it reciprocally? Why was it only unidirectional, where it says that you can apply the leniencies of Sukkot to Shabbos? Why didn't it say also that you could apply the leniencies of Shabbos to Sukkot? So the Gemara answers... The Gemara answers, "Hahu lo itzterichale." He says that's not necessary to be itemized. We don't even have to talk about that. You know why? He says, he says because hashta mikilta lechamirta amrina and mechamirta lekilta lo kol shekain. He says if we know that you can apply the leniencies of Sukkot to Shabbos, and Sukkot is a more lenient holy day because it is only an Isser lav, where Shabbos is an Isser kares. 
and we, yet we can apply the migu going from the lesser to the more chamor, then surely we can apply the leniencies of the more chamor to the less to the less stringent holy day. So therefore, that's implicit. Once we have a statement that teaches us that I can apply the laws of Sukkot to the laws of Shabbos when Sukkot and Shabbos coincide, then surely I know, without even saying it, that I can apply the leniencies of the laws of Shabbos to the laws of Sukkot when the two coincide. Gufa. So now let's go back to that statement that was just Rabba was just quoted as having said. Omar Rabba that if on the Shabbos of Sukkot you put schach over a mavoi that you've already set up with a lechi to enable you to carry in the mavoi and you put schach on that because that mavoi is considered a rishus hayachid vis-a-vis Shabbos it's also called a kosher sukkah vis-a-vis the laws of Sukkot even though normally you would need a tefach sochek you would normally need that additional tefach slat to be positioned. So the Omar Rabba, Rabba further said, And he further said, he says um, that if you remember that case of Pase Biros that we talked about a day or two ago, that it's the law in Shabbos that if you have a well out in the desert, what they used to do is they would build four L shaped uh, corners around it even though they were at a great distance and there was no real wall and there was certainly more parutz than, than, than omed, there was more breach than there was uh, standing uh, wall space, but nevertheless that's acceptable for the purposes of getting water out of the well. As long as you have four L-shaped posts that are one ama by one ama, normally that would not uh, constitute a kosher sukkah by just putting schach over it. But since it works, to be considered a Rishus HaYachid for the laws of Shabbos, it works for the purposes of the laws of Sukkah as well, but only for only when it's on Shabbos itself. It just doesn't seem to make sense. <laughs> it's a, it's a, you're talking about a structure. How could it be just on one day it's kosher and the next day it's not kosher anymore? Because Shabbos is Shabbos. It's, it's very so it interesting. The of this, it changes the Metzius of the It changes the Metzius of the structure. The fact that the Torah considers it a Rishus HaYachid for Hilcha Shabbos means that it's considered a, a, a structure for Hilcha Sukkah as well. Right? And, and, and it's quite fascinating. I mean, Shlomi is raising a very valid point. Normally, we don't say that uh, we're more lenient on Shabbos than we are during the weekday. You would think just the opposite. But that's the reality here. It's a principle of an application of the Migu. Where do we get this from? I don't know. Is it a halach la Moshe Misinai? I don't know where it comes from. The Yels are facing the opposite way, right? They're not, they're not even... They're they are facing the same way. T- t- take a look at the diagram in Rashi. That's, that's the diagram. Oh, that's the Ls? Yeah, those are the Ls. It's yeah. also, um, in practice, it's impossible because you can't start fiddling them. You know, let's say you want to apply this principle. So the day, like Erev Shabbos, you would dismantle them. No, 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 no. You have a sukkah in your house, right. a, a fully, fully, uh, a fully structured, four-walled sukkah. Uh-huh. But you're going to be wa- traveling on Shabbos uh-huh. to a friend's house, and you want to have a sukkah on the way, uh-huh. so that you can make kiddush and you know uh-huh. have so a mezunah. Constructed this funny way. So you happen to know that there's a well on the way to your friend's house. So you you put schach before Shabbos over the well, and over this uh, L st- sh- structure. You leave a little uh, kichel and bramfen, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> cool. by, by the well, it'll be there. Less than 2,000 amas. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's on the way. It's less than 2,000 amas. Yeah, or you made an air of and whatever you did. And so there, okay. All right. Now, the Gemara's question is, why was it necessary for Rabbah to give us both examples both the example of a mavoi that has a lechi that can be made into a kosher sukkah and the case of pase biros, these L-shaped uh, things around the well. Why did he need both cases? I'll tell you why. Di'iyashmin and mavoi mishum di'ika shte defanos ma'al yasa avol gabi pase biros leka shte defanos ma'al yasa emalo. If I only would have given you the first case, there you have two fully duly constituted walls. And maybe only there was Rabbah prepared to be lenient and say that it counts as a sukkah. But when you have these passe bureaus where you don't have any real walls because all of these L-shaped posts are at a distance from each other, they don't really count for anything, maybe he wouldn't have been prepared to be as lenient. So therefore he needed to say it outright. And, and if I only had the second case, 
maybe only over there is Robert prepared to be lenient because Lamaisa conceptually you at least have full, full uh, four full four walls, whereas in the case of the Mavoi Mefulash, where you only have two walls and a little bit extra, maybe he wouldn't be prepared to be lenient, and therefore, the therefore he needed to say both of those cases, the Ashmin and Hanitarti, and if he only would have said those two cases. And he would have, wouldn't have started off by talking about his first halacha, which was that on sukkahs that coincides with Shabbos, you can judge a two wall and a little bit extra as a full rishus hayachid. I would have thought mechamirta lekilta avol mekilta lechamirta emolo tzricha. Then I would have thought that you can only be lenient when the laws of Shabbos are liberal and the laws of sukkahs are more chamur. Then we can be more lenient on sukkahs because we're going from a more stringent holiday to a more lenient holiday. But to go from a more lenient Lenient holy day like Sukkot, and apply those laws to Shabbos, and say that on Shabbos I'm allowed to actually carry in that Sukkah. Maybe I would, Rabbi never would have been prepared to be lenient, and therefore he needed to tell me all three halachas. Next, let's go weiter. On the, on the first view, that you said that you pass the food from the window into the Sukkah only to only be like once a year, only on Sukkah. That's correct. That's exactly the point. Sukkot is some Shabbos, which means Shemini Atzeres would be Shabbos also. Wouldn't work. It's Shemini is not Sukkot anymore. So That's right. Interesting. Yeah. Vishe Maruba Mitzilasa Pesula. Next, the Mishnah had said that when there's more uh, sunlight than shade, then this is not a kosher Sukkah anymore. So Tana Rabbonim Chamasa Machmasichuch Velo Machmas Tefanos. The, the Brisa tells us something that is intuitive. When we say that there's more sunlight than shade, it's possible. That's only provided that the sunlight is coming through the schach. What if I have glass walls in my sukkah? I have a very thick cover of schach, but my walls are made out of glass. So is that a kosher sukkah? So the Bryce says, yes, it's still kosher, because I've got the provision of a fully, fully constituted schach ceiling. Oh, you have three walls. What? Or you have three walls. Like or even, even if I only have three walls and there's sunlight coming in, exactly. Rabbi Yoshia Omer Af Machmastafanus, Rabbi Yoshia disagrees and he says no, that the walls also have to provide more shade than sunlight. If the walls are made out of glass, he says it's not kosher. Amar of Yemer Bar Shalmiya Mishmei the Abaya, my time of the Rabbi Yoshia. What's his argument? Dichsiv, because it says in the Torah of Isakosa Al Ha'aron Esaparochas, that you shall cover the Aron with the Parochas. That's in the construction of the Mishkan. Now let's think about this. Paroches mechitza v'kakayi rachmana sechacha, alma mechitza kischach ba'inan. Why does the Torah call the paroches, which is the curtain that acts as the partition between the holy and the holy of holies, why should that be called a cover? How do you cover a vertical curtain over the Aron? You're not covering it over with the Aron, but what you see from there is, is that something which is a vertical wall, like the paroches, is considered to be part of the cover of something, so even the wall is considered to be part of the roof structure, and therefore whatever applies to the schach applies to the walls as well. The Rabbonon, hahu of beiporta demechzi kischach. The Rabbonon say, no, we look at that Pasuk differently. All that Pasuk tells me is that the paroches has to be a little bit overlapping at the top, and bending into the Kodesh HaKadoshim, so that it looks like it's starting to act as a protective cover. Not that it actually has to serve that purpose, nor does it have to have the same qualities of the Schach. Amr Abaye. Abaye now says, Rebbe, v'Rebbe Yoshia, v'Rebbe Yehuda, v'Rebbe Shimon, v'Rebbe Gamliel, u'Bei Shammai, v'Rebbe Eliezer, v'Acherim, all of these different Tanoim, kul husvira luhusukah diras keva ba'inan. All of them hold that a sukkah needs to, in some way, be a more permanent structure. Now, let me just clarify this. We're not suggesting here that they all hold the same shita. What we are saying is that they have a commonality in that they all place a greater weight on the permanence of the structure than what the Chachamim normally require. The Chachamim normally say diras arai, temporary structure, a hut, that's all fine, well, and good, but all of these tanoim place more permanence on their structure. So Rebbe, the Tanya, what's Rebbe? Rebbe's b'raisa was, Rebbe Omer, kol sukkah shen ba'arba amos al arba amos, basula. 
We learned before that according to the Chachamim, seven by seven Tfachim is sufficient. But Rebbe says, no, you have to really be able to reside there like a permanent residence, and therefore you need at least four Amos by four Amos. So that's what we had seen that before. Rebbe Yoshi Hadam, and Rebbe Yoshi is like we said. He says the walls have to provide shade because you need a, a more of a permanent dwelling. No one would want to dwell in a glass house. Right, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to throw stones, right? But, <laughs> but, uh, but, but, uh, but the point is, is that that's not called a permanent structure. Rabbi Yoshi requires greater permanence, and that's why he requires the walls provide shade. Rabbi Yehuda did not. What was Rabbi Yehuda? As the Mishnah said, Rabbi Yehuda had said that a sukkah that's higher than twenty amos is kosher because Rabbi Yehuda allows for a sense of permanence where you lay a foundation and you build sturdy walls. Because, and that's the, the reason why the Chachamim held that it's not kosher, at least according to one opinion. Right? Okay, good. The Rebbe Shimon, the Tanya Beis Keil Chasan, the Gimel Afilo Tevach, Rebbe Shimon Omer Gimel Keil Chasan, the Dalad Afilo Tevach. Rebbe Shimon had argued with the Chachamim. The Chachamim say you only need three walls where the third wall is just a Tevach. Rebbe Shimon says, no, you need four walls where the fourth wall is just a Tevach. So you see that Rebbe Shimon requires greater protection from the elements because he has a greater emphasis on the permanence or the more dwelling residential style of the sukkah. Rebbe Gamliel de Tanya, Haosa Sukaso Berosha Agala, Oberosh HaSafina, Rabbi Gamliel, Posel, Rabbi Akiva, Machshir. What's Rabbi Gamliel? There's a price that we're going to learn about later on, that if a person makes a sukkah on a wagon or on a, uh, on, on a boat, so Rabbi Gamliel says that that's not a good sukkah. Rabbi Akiva says it is a kosher a sukkah. Do, do, do Chabad, they make sukkahs on, on trucks or buses, or is that just menorahs? No, they yeah? do. Sure. Sure, sukkah mobiles. Okay, you must sukkah mobiles. So you must hold like Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Gamliel says that that's puzzle. Rabbi Akiva says that it's kosher. So, so that's why, because Rabbi Gamliel says that if it's moving, that's not called. It doesn't have that sense of permanence or residence that you really need. Beishamai. What was Beishamai? Did not Misha Hayerosh of Eruva Besoka Beshulchanu Besocha Bayis Beishamai Posel Beisel Machshirin. Like we had seen before, that Beishamai say you need to be able to have your table in the sukkah. It's got to be like the way. That you reside, right? And Basil will say, no, your table doesn't have to fit in the sukkah. Okay, that was another example of Beis Shammai being like all of the aforementioned, requiring a more residential feel to the sukkah. Rabbi Eliezer did not. Haosu sukasu kemin srif o shasam chalakosel. Rabbi Eliezer posel afisha in lagag v'chachamim machshirin. Here's Rabbi Eliezer. There is two cases. One is where you make your sukkah like a tipi, tipi wigwam, tipi wigwam, right, right. Say. Right. Right. <laughs> So, so if you make your if you make your sukkah like a tipi, which means that you take a bunch of bamboo sticks and you bring them up to a tip, so Rabbi Eliezer says that that's not a kasher a sukkah. The Chachamim say that is kasher. The other alternative is where you make a lean a lean on or something like that. Lean to a lean to. I never even heard that term. Someone told it to me this morning. Oh, yeah. It's called a lean to. Yeah. Oh, where you take sticks and you, or, or slats and you lean them up against the wall so that you basically have a right angle triangle that you can rest under. That's a kosher sukkah according to the Chacham and Rebbe Yezus says it's puzzle. Again, because it doesn't have that residential feel of having a roof over your head. Okay, and uh, Acherim, what's the, what's the, the Acherim opinion? The Tanya, Acherim Omrim, sukkah ha'asuya kishovach pisula lefi she'in lo zavuyos. They say that if a sukkah is made like a shovach, like a dovkup, meaning that it's circular or it's cylindrical in shape, so then it's not kosher because it doesn't have corners. And as we all know, uh, a house has corners, right? Because if you build a sukkah, you can't cut corners. You can't cut corners, and therefore it's not called a residence, right? It was, it was that old joke, if you want to drive a, 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 it's an ethnic joke, if you want to drive so, a certain person of lesser intelligence crazy, you throw a quarter into a circular room and say, it's, find it in the corner. Anyway, I'm a Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan now says, Sukkah ha'asuya kikibshan. Now we're going to do some geometry. We're going to start the lesson in geometry today. We will finish it tomorrow. Rabbi Yochanan says that if a sukkah is made like a kibshan, it's made like a kiln and cylindrical in nature, so and you put schach over the top, it, here Rabbi Yochanan is prepared to say that it's kosher, but it has to be a minimal size. So he says, If 24 men could sit down on the inside of the periphery of this cylindrical room 
and sit down comfortably, the assumption being is that each man's girth is one ama. So then you have a circumference, a circle that's a circumference of, you know, I just I just read that uh, it's it's a small world in Disneyland. Seventy-two. They had to they had to change the ride. They had to completely re-engineer the entire ride because the boats kept getting stuck because America is getting fatter. Uh. And the, so they had to com- they had to they had to completely retool the entire thing. So assuming that the yeah, right. they do that on the cruise ships, they made the chairs wider. They made the chairs wider. There you go. So assuming assuming that the girth of every person is one ama, so you have to be able to seat, I guess, twenty four guys sitting down in the periphery of the circle. And that would be a kosher asuka, and v'im lav pesula. And if not, it's pasul kiman kirebi the omer kol sukkah shein ba arba amos al arba amos pesula. And this goes like Rebbe, who says that a sukkah has to be at least four by four amos. Now let's think about the math for a second. I'm going to make life very simple for you and tell you that pi is three. Now, if you have a circle that has a circumference of twenty four, what is the diameter of that uh, of that circle? Pi r squared. No, no, no. No, no. That's, a, that's the area. Two pi what's, r. what's the what's the diameter? Pi d. Pi d. Pi pi, uh, um, pi d, uh, or d pi is that you get the circumference. So you just if pi is three, then just divide the circumference by three, and that will give you the diameter. What is the diameter of such a circle? Twenty four is the circumference. Eight. Thank you. The diameter is going to be eight. Okay, 24 divided by 3 is 8. What in the world does this have to do with Rebbe Shita that it says only has to be 4 by 4? So that's the Gemara's question. The Gemara says, Mechti, Gavra Ba'am Suyasif. The Gemara says, let's, let's think about this for a second. Every person has a girth of one ama. Okay? Kol shiyesh behekeifo shlosha tfachim yesh bo rochav tefach. That we know that if you have a diameter of 1, then the circumference is 3. So it's a 1 to 3 ratio. So if the circumference is 24, then all you should require for the dia- then the diameter is 8. But if, there's, if the diameter is 4, which is a 4 by 4 sukkah, then all you should need is a circumference of 12. Betrays or sagi. That's all that you should need. So the Gemara says, Honey, mili bi igula, avol biribua bayetfe. Answers the Gemara that that's only true if you're dealing with a circular sukkah. But you need to square off that sukkah. And in order to square off that sukkah, you need extra space, because a circular sukkah with a diameter of four is insufficient. You need to account for a sukkah that's four by four in a square, and that's larger. So therefore, you need to expand the diameter. So the Gemara says, wait a minute, that's, the math is still not going to work. You're saying that you need to expand from a diameter of four to a diameter of eight, you need to make the circle double the size? That doesn't make any sense. Mechti, kama meruba yoser al ha'igil ravia. This is a square that bounds a circle is only 25% larger in area than the circle. You can do the math and you can figure this out. This is basic geometry. The Gemara says if that's the case, then all you should have to do is increase the diameter by 25%, which will make it 5 point something. Six. Or, or make it, no, it's it, no, 5.6, right? That'll be 25% more than 4, approximately, I think. Yeah. But, but, but the point is, bishitsar, bishitsar sagi. Then you should, if, if we, if just take a quarter more than the diameter, than, than the circumference of 12, a quarter more than the circumference of 12 will be 16. 25% more than 12 is 16. That's a quarter more than 12, right? Just take a quarter of 12, and that's... Uh, that's 15. Four. 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 15. No, 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 I'm sorry. It's, um, it's, 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 it's from the, it's from the, the outside. outside. It's from the outside, sorry. So, so, right. So, basically, a quarter of 16 is, uh, is, um, is, four. is 4. 16 minus 4 is 12. Oh. That's the way the Gemara is looking at the math. But it's basically, proportionally, it shouldn't, you shouldn't need a circumference of 24 to get a diameter of 8, you should need a circumference of 16. And 16 divided by 3, um, then it's like basically a little bit over 5, 5.6, whatever it is. 5.2, right, 5.3. That's all you should need. 
So the Gemara says, you know what? Um, the Gemara says, honey, mealy be eagle denafik migav ribua. Aval ribua denafik migav igula bayatve, mishamursha de karnasa. So the Gemara says, yes, you were doing the math when you were thinking about the square bounding the circle on the outside, like the first diagram on the page. But the reality is, in order to be able to fill the criteria of Rebbe that you need a 4 by 4 sukkah, the entire square has to be inside and is bounded by the circle on the outside. And that actually requires a much larger circle. So now, think about this is a much easier Pythagorean theorem to be able to work in the, in the geometry, okay? Now, think about this second diagram. The hypotenuse of that square is the diameter of the circle. Am I being clear? Let's think about that again. The hypotenuse of that square, if you, if, you, if you make that square into two right angle triangles, that hypotenuse is, is abutting the two sides of the circle, so that's the diameter. So all you need to know is if I've got a four by four um, um, square, then it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What will be the hypotenuse of a four by four right angle triangle, approximately 5.6. And, that, and therefore, that should be 5.6 times three is what should give you what your circumference is, which is about 16.8. Okay, so therefore the Gemara says, that's still not gonna get you up to 24. So the Gemara says, Mehdi kol amso biribua amso utre chum shabalachsona. So the Gemara gives us that Pythagorean theorem roughly is that if you have a right angle triangle that's one by one, the hypotenuse is one and two fifths. That's the rough <coughs> uh, 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 equivalence of what the Pythagorean theorem is. So therefore, using the proportions of, instead of one by one, four by four, four times 1.25, uh, one and two fifths rather, is gonna to give you 16.8. So b'shiv sur nechichum shesagya, 17 minus a fifth, or 16.8, is all that you're going to need for your circumference. Why do you need 24? So the Gemara says, low duck, we weren't being precise in the math. We rounded it up from 16.8 to 24. <laughs> so the Gemara says, Amar, de amrina low duck, porta tuva mi amrina. I can understand you rounding it up a little bit, but going from 16.8 to 24, that's ridiculous. So the Gemara says, me I'm reading low duck. So Amr Lei, Mar Keshisha Bere de Rav Chista, Le Rav Ashi, Mi Savris Gavra Ba'am Sayasiv, Tlasa Gavri Betarti Am Sayasvi. So he says, you're making a basic, uh, uh, your basic uh, premise was wrong. It's not that the girth of each man is one Amma wide. You're not dealing with Americans, you're dealing with Middle Easterners. And therefore, the girth the girth of a, of, a, of a person is three men in two amas. So it's a third less. Two thirds. So it's, no, it's a third less in the measurements. So therefore, it says, Kamahavulahu Shitzar. So the Gemara says, but if that's the case, then if you do, if you, if you take away, so 24 men is really 16 amas in circumference, not 24. Two right? What is two, th- th- two, two thirds of 24, yeah. right? So the Gemara says, but wait a minute. So then you're only telling me that you need a circumference of 16, but if you're telling me that you need a square inside the circle and therefore the circumference needs to be 16.8, how can you tell me therefore you only need 16? So the Gemara says, low duck. Uh, so we're rounding it downwards. But one second, you only say that you can round things off to be machmir, but to round things off to go down, that doesn't make sense. You're going to tell, you're going to cause per people to violate the halacha. So the Gemara's conclusion is, We're going to go back to our original shita that every person's girth is one ama. They, they ate kishka, right? The Reb Yochanan so the answer is is that your, one of your other premise was wrong. You thought that the people, the 24 men, are sitting on the inside of the circle. No, they're sitting on the outside of the, of the cylindrical structure. And if they're sitting on the outside of the cylindrical structure, so then the circumference of the 24 men is on the outside of them is 24 amos, but the inner circle that they're sitting, that is that they're, that is on their that their their backs are to, is a much smaller circle. So kama havulahu tamanes rei, because basically, 
Um, because basically what you have to do is you have to now subtract one ama on each side of the circle. In other words, when you have a circle that has a diameter of 24, but you have, but all, you have men that are sitting on the inside of that 24 circumference circle, and you have a smaller circle that's with, that uh, on the inside, each man is one by one ama. So the inner circle has, if the diameter of the larger circle is eight, the diameter of the smaller circle is six. So therefore, the circumference is going to be six times three is going to be 18. So the Gemara says, fine. So the Gemara says, 18, kama havalu tmane sagya. I but 16.8 is sufficient. So the Gemara says, hainu de lo dak, ulechumr lo dak. That's what we mean when we said that we were rounding things up. To say that you want to round things up from 16.8 to 18, that's a legitimate, that's, that's a legitimate estimation. And that le- allows us to be machmir and say, make sure you have this kind of circumference, a circle of 18, in order for your circuit to be kosher. Have a wonderful day.